It's not supposed to do that. Hey, it's Jeremy at Gilbrook Farm, and today I'm gonna fix my DeWalt pneumatic framing nailer that is leaking by installing this rebuild kit, which basically consists of all the O-rings and super lube, a tube of goop, synthetic grease. Um, you don't want to use silicone grease because that can degrade your rubber o-rings so make sure if you're doing this you use synthetic grease. And I got this on eBay for $24. And I figured it's worth a shot to try and rebuild this leaky nailer as opposed to spending another two or three hundred dollars or whatever they cost. I've had this for a while. I've only used it maybe well less than a dozen times and uh, it's leaking. It doesn't shoot nails and I'm pretty sure one of the O-rings is blown, so when you buy these, they come in a complete kit. So I'm going to replace all the rings. Now, I've never done this before, so I guess if I can do it, then anybody can do it. So if you have this problem, this is how you do it. Now, we live in a consumer-driven economy, and I suppose that's all right. But what I don't think is all right is the throwaway, disposable nature of the products that the companies make. These companies spend as little money as possible on design and research and engineering and product design and ma manufacturing and labor. Uh, to make the, the products that they put out as cheap as possible so that they last just long enough for the warranty to expire, if they even do come with a warranty. The companies do this on purpose. It improves their revenue cycle. This is by design. Think about this. A um, hundred years ago, if you bought a hammer like this for a hundred dollars and used it and passed it on to your kids and they passed it on to their kids and the thing lasted a hundred years, that, that cost about a dollar a year. Um, that is about a dollar a year of revenue that went to the company that you bought the hammer from. Now, suppose this hammer costs $10, but it only lasts a year. You can't pass it down to your kids because it only lasts a year. That company has just improved their revenue cycle by a thousand percent. And you are now used to having to buy a hammer every year to replace the one that just goes bad. That's no good. So when I find a company that still makes a product that's of real good quality, and I'm talking heirloom quality that I can pass down generation to generation, I stick with that company for life. I used to think that about DeWalt. I've got a lot of DeWalt tools, and I've never had a problem with them. Uh, I've got a lot of different brands of tools. DeWalt has always been a really great brand. This is the first time I've ever had a problem, and so I'm gonna try and fix this, and hopefully it'll last me, you know, for a very long time. I understand it's got a lot of moving parts and it's bound to wear out over time if I use it a lot, but like I said, I haven't used this very much, so let's get to it. Okay, nailer, got a paper towel, got some handy dandy surgery doctor gloves. <clears throat> First thing, you gotta remove this back cover to the housing. I remove these four Allen screws and then take the housing cover off. All right, set these somewhere where you're not gonna lose them, obviously. Housing, maybe. All right. All right, that's just um, a friction fit. So, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> I 
All right, take this assembly here, and uh, this is kind of tricky if you don't know how to do it, which I sure did not. So if, uh, if you press this ring, but the only thing that holds this on is, a, is this O-ring. So we're going to pop this out. There we go. All right, so let's try first O-ring. Take your spring off. You get this. This is a rubber piece. Take this out. Take our larger screwdriver and separate this whole contraption here. Get that so it comes off. All right. Now you've got this rubber ring here, which this should slide off of. You got that. And you got an o-ring in here and that is our problem this o-ring is destroyed look at that it's in pieces it looks like a piece of spaghetti so that's the culprit now the question is should i replace every o-ring and continue tearing this apart or just replace this one i think i'm just going to replace this one only because now i know how to tear it apart and fix it and I'm trying to get this done, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, first, let's clean up all the gunk off this. It's got a lot of gunk. Pieces of O-ring spaghetti. Get all this out of here. We don't want any debris in here that can cause this thing to leak air. Oops. It's an awfully loose ring. All these other rings, uh, the black ones, look to be in real good shape. It was just that. Uh, kind of translucent one that was junk. So I'm going to clean all these parts. Make sure I can get any of the debris off. You can tell that I use pneumatic tool uh, oil a lot. Maybe a little too much. Every time I... Uh, right before I start using a tool I put a drop or two of pneumatic tool oil in the uh, intake inlet port for the air where the air hose connects. That helps keep everything lubed up, but uh, looks like on this one I might have used just a little too much because it's goopy. So look at all these parts, make sure there's no nicks or scratches that are, you know bad that would cause it to need to cause it to need to be replaced these all look pretty much brand new like I said I haven't used this thing very much all right this o-ring let's see I'm gonna reuse this little nick in it. Not going to reuse that, so I'll replace that one too. Take out the tube of goop. And I think it was this one. That looks about right. And this one. 
looks like that. So this is junk. And we'll save these ones for later. Put a decent little coat of uh, super lube on here. And kind of mush it in. Careful not to cut it as you uh, put, put the new ring down. Take a little bit more goop. Smoosh that in. Alright. Now I'm just going to reverse the process, put everything back together. Okay, I got a new O-ring on. It's going to replace this white part. Get a few turns to work in that uh, grease. Uh, put on our this white collar. Put on this rubber piece. Make sure it's seated down inside the white collar. Spring. Cap. Compress it. And then put on our replacement O-ring. Make sure that's sealed, seated. Make sure everything's good. Put some grease on all your O-rings. All right, now we can reinstall this. So we got our assembly put back together. We're gonna put this back into the housing with the um, this clear or this translucent part up facing the top. Just give it a good whack. Take your piston, reinsert it. Make sure the flat part of the rod matches up with the flat part of the the the, uh, the hole inside. Push her down in. Put your housing back together. Doesn't leak. I'd say that's a winner. Well, that worked out pretty good. Now this thing works and I uh, don't have to buy a new one. So if you guys find yourself in the same situation, get yourself a rebuild kit and uh, put in new O-rings. If you guys like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.